going on, y'all? Welcome back to another edition of Who's Next Leaderboard Live, the quarantine edition, let me say that. But we are back for a cool little episode. Now, I'm in the crib, board. I figured out I'll do, I'll do the show this week in the living room. So I got my I got my rooms down packed. But it's one thing that I do know that I've been bored and you've been bored too. But I got something for you to do. Make sure that you guys download our new Who's Next web app because this is where it gets down at. This is where the nitty gritty gets at. This is where I am able to actually see all of our artists that submit in our, their music. I get to rate their music. I get to give them live feedback. And who knows, you might actually get on our leaderboard, our top 20 leaderboard, let me say. And then next thing you know, you might be Moochie, who's, to, who's gonna be featured on our show today because he is our BC contest winner for this month. My man is from Richmond, Virginia. He's about to get a billboard all the way in Times Square. Wavy. So make sure you guys download our Who's Next web app, all right? Guys, make sure you download the app and if you need any more information you log on to who's next.hot97.com now last week we had my man dj juanito in the building he was on the app he curated some music for me he got busy on there he left some feedback for some artists and we also had my man came through dropping the, some gems when i mean gems y'all gonna see in a second but my man sean Barron, the vp of a and r over at motown records and capital records came through as well Yes, I'm Next telling track you. is going with uh, Little Dell, Forgot About Me. All right, we're going to get into it. All right, let's see what he's about. How the fuck is everybody becoming famous, but it's like they forgot about me. I was the one that everybody called on every time it would be in the street. Little Dell, Forgot About Me. Um, I must say it might need some work. Um... The production might need a little tuning, but I think that's about it, man. I think he sounds like a little young um, uh, plies to me. That's just the way I'm seeing it. Um, I want to put a perspective when, when we're listening to these records, it, it, you know, with whatever's going on right now in the world, you know, these records happen before whatever happens. So try to, to let the music escape what's going on right now. So we're just trying to provide some entertainment, some, you know, some feel good music and try to get some feedback to these uh, young and upcoming artists. And now get some feedback for this guy. Needs. Sorry guys. I have fat fingers. Boom. Hit submit. Pow. And right now we like a new 106 in Park on the street. So I want to know from the vice president of a and Motown record. What is some advice you can give to our young emerging artists out here? Uh, the most important thing is to be consistent. So if you start dropping music, don't stop because you feel like nobody is listening. Just keep releasing, keep being consistent. And you don't know, like, your one fan gonna turn to two, your two gonna turn to four, your four gonna turn to eight, and it's gonna keep going. Absolutely. Just be consistent in what you're doing always. And just have a, have a real plan into what you're doing too. Uh, I mean, we have nothing but time now. Plan out, say, every for for an hour you're gonna go on instagram live every day and just interact with the people um say go do a TikTok if you got a TikTok song go just do whatever you can that's creative that's thinking outside the box i feel like tory lanes is gonna come out the winner it is with so many new quarantine 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 exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's got the people right now. He's got them tuned in. Even though his platform is sort of bigger, but he there's other artists who still have that same platform who didn't think to do what he's doing now. So, Absolutely. you know, you've got to be creative. Sean Barron on the check and A lot of gems were dropped. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to check out that episode, go check that out. 
telling you right now, you're gonna get the answers to the test. Now, if you're looking for more gems, today is the day because I have this special, Tamika D. Mallory in the building. I'm talking, she's a recognized civil rights activist. She's also an anti-violent advocate and she will be stopping by. Now, just a sec, before she gets in here though, we have our March B Scene contest winner in the building. He will be stopping by as well. My man Moochie, coming all the way from Richmond, Virginia, will be coming through in a second. Stay live. This is Who's Next Leaderboard Live. We got our B, we got our B Scene contest winner in the building right now from Richmond, Virginia. Moochie, what's the word, baby? What's happening? Can't complain. How you doing? Quarantine vibes. Quarantine vibes. Yeah, yeah. Doing what you're supposed to. You know what I mean? Stay home. You know the vibes, man. It's like, well, what else could we do? Now, now, Moochie, I need to know, how did you and your team even find out about the BC contest, man? Pretty much, we was on the same contest a year ago. Oh, were we? And, yeah, we was on the same contest a year ago, and we were in second place. We were running up against Being in Love. Being in Love had won it that Okay. Then, and pretty much like, it was like, we're gonna give it another shot eventually, you know what I'm saying? And just happened to give it another shot. And then boom, here we are. So Moochie, let me know right now, what do you have cooking up right now during quarantine? Like what, what, what you cooking up on? What could we expect? Pretty much, you know what I mean? With this quarantine slowing up everything, um, I'm still working. Pretty much, I want to drop, I'm planning to drop a project soon. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and just drop the name. I haven't gave nobody the name, but y'all will be the first to say the name. The name is Nightmares on Alexander. And Nightmares on Alexander? Yeah, Nightmares on Alexander. And that sounds like the block. That's the block in, in VA. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. respectfully, respectfully. Yes, sir. But pretty much I'm thinking about dropping around summertime. Y'all see the artwork soon, though. All right, all right. Well, I'm gonna be in tune. You know I'm gonna be in tune. So like Moochie, like when all of this is over, quarantine and everything, like when you actually get your get the opportunity to come out here, go to Times Square and actually see you up in up in the on the buildings and on the rafters, like how how's that gonna feel, man? Oh man, that's gonna be a blessing for real, for real. To like coming from where I come from, you know what I mean, Richmond, Virginia. No other artist has ever seen that before. You know what I'm saying? So like I used to be to be the one that like, I'm oh, talking in the middle of Times Square. I'm like, I'm talking tourists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for it. It's, 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 that's experience, cool man. it's a dope it's experience. Cool. It's super. I mean, to me, I think it's really. It could be life changing in, in two different ways. One, because you probably never imagined this, and then two, a lot of things can happen from this. So. I mean, more power right. too, bro. I think you lit. I think it's lit right now. I ain't going front. It's lit right now. We got VA in the building. That's why I keep trying to tell New York artists and it's just people nearby, like, take advantage of these opportunities because you never know what's going to happen. And now you're going to be in the middle of the Times Square. So big ups to you. So what's now, what, what's the momentum about to be moving forward? I mean, we might be quarantined and chilling, but you still working. You're still able to work. Yeah, most definitely. For real, for real, just keep it going. You know what I mean? Like, it's a great thing, you know what I mean? I'm gonna just treat it as if, like, I'm not gonna let it get to my head. I'm gonna just treat it as if it's another thing. You see what I'm saying? Okay. I'm going to be humble about it and just keep going. You know what I mean? Because well, like my, I said, I had lost it before. My advice to you is, from this, this is just another dot to connect to another dot. That's how I see it. And then on, on, a, on a real tip, Bro, you better mix. You better misuse it. Abuse this. This is lit. You go think about it. Yeah, you have to go. I know yeah. your promotion. Yeah, we definitely gonna use, gonna use this. We definitely gonna use this. Like you know, what I mean? we got plans. We got a whole bunch of plans. You know, what I mean, we're just gonna show the world how how to direct this. You know, what I mean, it's excellent. Do you have any projects out right now? We gotta get each other on the gram after this. So I'm gonna need you. You know, I'm gonna need your project. I need to know what's going on because I'm about to see it out here. So I need to be in tune. People be like, Yo, who's that? Oh, that's my man Mucci. Yeah, I have a few projects out. Um, I had dropped Full World. It's on every music platform. You know what I mean, anywhere you think of music. You know what I mean, from JPay, KK Box, anything. Um, I also have Untitled, and to be honest, I have a few other singles like Say So, which is doing numbers. That's what had honestly. That's what had won the competition. 
to like say so is out 10. I got a whole bunch of stuff. Just check me out. Moochie with three E's. You know I mean? So if you had two words to describe your sound, what would it be? <sighs> I say sometimes I can get melodic. So yeah, I say melodic and trap like street sometimes. Okay. Okay. So what's what, what's your, what's albums are you bumping right now? That that raw wave just dropped about last week. What, what albums you listening to? The baby dropped today. Yeah, I see the baby. I honestly didn't even get a chance to listen to the baby album yet. And raw wave, I, I like raw wave. I'm not a huge fan of him right now. Okay. Mainly, I've been mainly I've been focused so much on myself. I haven't even listened to a whole bunch of other artists. Respectfully, respectfully. Well, Moochie. Much love to you. Boogie is definitely in tune. Make sure we get each other on the gram. You are a beast scene contest winner. Congratulations. It's lit from here. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. You already know the vibes, man. Who's next? Leaderboard Live. Gang, gang, gang. This is goddamn Mooch. Yeah, damn. Y'all know where to find me at. You know what I mean? Check me out at Moochie. Three E's, H O E on Instagram. Moochie Ho. Right. Every other music platform. I mean, Mooch with the East. Much love, Mooch. Keep working out there, baby. Most definitely. All right. Now, it is with great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, that we actually, we, we've expanded our genres here at Who's Next. We've gone from music to fashion to now politics. It is with uh -huh. great honor that we have our very first our first, you you are first lady. How about that? Uh oh, uh -oh. Our first, that's what's up. That's what's our, up. Our very first civil rights leader. We have our very first advocate. Uh, this is this is blowing my mind because I knew that our show was gonna grow to this big of, of heights till we reach this this to to this. So now we're here. So introducing the special Miss Tamika D. Mallory, how you doing? Uh, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, What's it all about? What do I, how do I look great? Show me how to make me look great on well, this show. Well, well, you look great already. Let's start there. <laughs> you are the first ever, ever, political anything political that we've ever even a, invited to the show. That's so it's, it's, it's okay. for us. That's it's great. So huge. As you can see uh, to all my viewers out there, She's a person of color, so big shout out. We, we went in it. We went in it. Girl magic. Now, Ms. Tamika, yeah. I want to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about what current priorities are in, in, in our new reality around? Matter of fact, before we even jump into it, give everybody a little brief insight of exactly what you do on a day to day and the things that you've been getting busy with. So, I do a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I am a, I, I like to say I'm a serial activist, a serial organizer. Um, and that's because there are so many issues happening in our community and our people are, are, have so many challenges in different spaces that I believe anyone who claims to be a leader is someone who can't rest, right? Um, and I'm, I don't mean that in a literal sense because I do think that we should get some rest, um, but the struggle continues and there's always a fight that we as leaders have to help our people understand. We have to, um, you know, uh, organize around and, and really give people the tools that they need to be advocates in their own right. Um, because once we leave local communities, there has to be a plan left on the ground for the people in that community to take on the struggle and to carry it on. Um, and many of them teach us, you know, when you go into a community and you're like, oh, we're here to help. They, people look at you like, <laughs> you, you know, you gonna help us? You, where you been, right? We've been doing this. As far as we're concerned, bring us some resources so we can continue to do the work that we're trying to do. Exactly. So, um, you know, I'm an activist, I'm an organizer, and, um, you know, I don't know what specific issues we want to cover today, but I think that's something that is, uh, you know, specifically, now, let me just mute you for one second so I can Sorry. I, um, so, 
my son is doing something really important for me that I asked him to do. You see how women are, right? I asked him to do it. And now that I'm on here, I'm asking him to stop doing it. So he's probably <laughs> down there like, you know what I mean? But he's got to stop for a minute. Um, and then of course, as soon as he gets relaxed, I'm going to be like, can you go back and finish it? Right. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't even know what I was saying, but what I will say is in this moment, so much is happening and the world has shifted, period. We all know that we'll never go back to exactly as we were before, right. um, just because people will have emerged in this moment as, um, as, 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 as more creative, more resourceful. Some people have lost a lot. Some people, their industries are impacted, have been hit really, really hard. Right. There's going to be within the black community, many different issues, not just um, the issue of coronavirus and how it has impacted us from a mortality perspective. Um, but there's also going to be issues of poverty, great poverty. You have people, unemployment is going to be an issue. Healthcare is clearly rising to the top of this thing as being one of the preeminent issues of our time. It's probably one of the most important issues of our time. Finding a way to provide healthcare for every single American. Um, and right now, when, when you understand that there are people who have been infected, but they can't get the proper treatment because they don't come from the right communities and or they don't have health insurance. Um, you, you know that, uh, you know, we've got some serious work to do. When you think about the fact that there are people locked up in prisons across this country for nonviolent offenses. And they have the virus itself. They have the virus. They're in there with correction officers who are people who live in our communities, people who look like us, who are, who are also being in, infected. Um, and, and there's no solution for it. There was no plan, right? There was no plan that if in fact, something like this happened, what would we do with these individuals? It's, um, a never, it's, a never, it's never been seen like this, this what we're, do, what we're going through right now is literally the first time like we've ever encountered something like this. So I right. think right now- Well, it's, it's, it's not because in 1918, influenza hit. Well, influenza, yes. Well, right. Yeah. But this is a different world, right? Like, you know, there are many, 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 many more people. We only had a third of the population at that time. Now we're talking about 325 million people. Right. And we just live in a different age. We live in a technology age. You know, you got women in the workforce. We're in 1918. Obviously, women were not moving about as we are today. Right. Um, you know, there weren't people were babysitting children at home. I was thinking to myself, this whole, you know, they said that in the summer this year, there may not be uh uh, uh, no, no, uh, did that too, of course, but um, not daycare, summer camp programs. Mm. I was thinking, damn, like, what do you do? <laughs> that's, that's that's monumental, right there. I mean, that's a that's every summer for me as a kid, that was something essential for me. So I could only imagine for all the kids coming up right now. And just speaking towards what you were saying, I, I wanted to ask you. Do you think that celebrities and influence influencers have like a, a, a social responsibility to encourage social social distancing and just kind of us retreating a little bit when it comes to healthcare and kind of trying to educate ourselves a little bit more? If we want to live, I mean, you know, if you want to live, because everything, every person is six degrees of separation from one another, right? Like, you can't go. You, I don't care who you are. You could be. I, I guess Beyonce and Jay-Z are socially distant at all times, right? I guess. I guess when you think about them, and how they, they can prove probably it. go to a little island, which is probably where they are, somewhere in a nice little place mm. in one of their homes where the folks who work for them have been sheltered in place from beginning to end so they're not worried about those people going out getting sick Right, so th those type, maybe, maybe in those situations, you can, you know, kind of do that. 
But at some point when the world opens back up, your hair has to get done by somebody. I don't care who you are for your show. There has to be somebody to make your costume. You, you don't even know. I, I don't even have a beard. I actually grew a beard <laughs> during this right. entire quarantine. You know like, I'm actually feeling it, though. I, I might, I might, you keep might it. Think, yo, you look cute. You look good. You look good. You look good. So at some point, people are going to be moving around you, right? That they, they did just, That's just the nature of you got life. That's I how mean, life works. Right. If you stick with Beyonce, there's there's people who work for her, the the, the, the dancers, the just I mean, there's people who have to go to work. You have employees who run your companies. So when you so when you say, Do I have a responsibility? Well, if we don't do it, then we as a people and as a human yeah, race is. could die. That's it. It's a, this is not a rocket science. It's situation. Very simple. It is very, very simple. simple. It's either we educate ourselves or we do not educate ourselves. That's it. But one thing that I, I have kind of been thinking about and given some time to was now we have we're so focused on the pandemic, right? We're so focused on the coronavirus and, and you know the death poll and you know what cities are, are contracting it the most. And I was saying to myself, I wonder and I was gonna I, I, I knew I was gonna ask you this. Have have you? Do you think that there are like other missions that are now kind of like taking a backseat during this time of uncertainty? Like we're so worried about the coronavirus that the other major things that was going on before this, whether it was ISIS or the kidnappings of of, of black girls, do you think that all of these other uh, things now take a back seat to the coronavirus. It's funny you asked about the, the missing young women because right before um, right before this situation, the coronavirus situation happened, my organization Until Freedom was in the process of planning a major summit around um, black and brown missing women and wow. girls. Um, and obviously we can't do it now, right. um, you know, and, 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 and when and how that will ever happen again has changed, right? Because the summit was going to bring together activists, the black male community that says, hey, how, how can I be involved? I'm, I'm, in the, I'm on the street every day and I don't know what to look for. You know what I'm saying? So we were trying to have that type of summit to give first responders like in the hood an opportunity to participate. Like right, really right. Like, yeah, what you see, see, you see something, not say something, do something, right? You know what I'm saying? So we were having that type of summit and, and bringing, um, you know, what does it look like to police our own communities? What does, you know, hearing from the advocates, the whole thing, the criminal justice aspect, the whole piece. We may or may not, that that's five or 600 people. We may or may not be able to do something like that for a while. So when you ask, are we not now not focusing on the same issues? Certainly because what is happening as a result is that organizing as we once knew it has to change. It's not, it's, it, it will no longer be the same. We will know, and, and even if, and even if to some degree um, we do get back to large gatherings, we know because of the fact that our communities are so vulnerable, we have to approach it from a different perspective. We have to figure out what it means to be more creative in our leadership styles and how we're telling our people to go about. Do we have 5 million people come together around the world now as we did with the Women's March? Is that something that we should do on any particular issue? We don't know. That may not be something that is possible in the near future. So yes, we all as leaders have to begin talking about social justice, organizing and activism post coronavirus. What does it look like? And then, you know, I think that one of the other big issues that we have to look at is this election. We have a presidential election coming up. And I think a lot of people aren't keeping mind to that. I mean, they, how can you, right? You already was partially focused on it. I mean, you you know, you knew what and was kind of happening. And now that 1200 just kind of shifted things a little different. <laughs> it did, it did, but the 1200 that's is going point. to, that's gonna quickly become a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. One, because $1,200, 
when I looked outside my window this morning, all the cars that have been parked here, I mean, packed, we, we can't find a parking space here in my community. They were gone because people was out spending their $1,200. 1200. <laughs> and so the $1,200 around, was around gone. here, we call that a little stimmy stem stem. A little stimmy stem, you know what I'm saying? It's getting ready to be gone. And then people will be sitting around asking questions again, like what, what the hell do we do now? But even, even with that, when they, the, the president wants to rush to open the country back up, right? For financial reasons, he needs to open it back up. Well, no one is saying that we think we can stay like this forever, but he wants to rush to open it back up. Hopefully people don't begin to die even more than what we've already seen. Because if that happens, the $1,200 won't mean a damn thing at that time. Right. So again, I think you're gonna have to have new ways to organize. The presidential election, we cannot take our eyes off of that. We were in the midst of a major, major democratic um, contest, right? Now that's over, we have what we have. Those of us who believe that Donald Trump ha cannot be in the White House, period, are now going to have to do work to keep people focused. They're gonna to, yep, they're gonna have to do their due diligence. On, exactly, on getting this man out of office. So lastly, because now this is just flowing right into what I wanted to ask you lastly. Now, do you think that the, cur the our current priorities, so whether it was waking up in the morning, taking our child to daycare, or if it was hair salons, but now do we, now that we revamp ourselves, now our current priorities are now in, uh, is there a new reality now for COVID-19? Our responsibility is now new. Like you said, I, we have to, to kind of now pay attention to the political things, that things that we weren't keeping in mind to, we might, have, we might have been at the bar or we might have been to a party, but we weren't watching C. We didn't have the chance to watch CNN for three hours and really understand the breakdown of what's going on, on from yeah. two weeks ago to two weeks later and how things are even formulating. So do you think like now we have to actually kind of gear our, our main priorities a little bit different now with COVID-19? Well, I will say this. Thank you for what you're doing right now, right? Because um, Black press is such an important part of how we're going to stay focused. You turn to CNN or MSNBC on right now, all they're doing is telling you how many people died. That's it. It's, that's, that's literally what the national news is about. Who died and the male ruler, what do you call it? The male measuring contest, okay? Who's whatever is bigger than who whatever because Cuomo's mad at, at Trump and what he said. Yeah, Cuomo beefing with de Blasio. And like. then, and de, de Blasio and, and Trump and Cuomo and then you might get a little bit of Sanjay Gupta and now they, who Dr. Oz said this, Dr. Phil said that. Dr. That's what they're talking about. Dr. Fossey said this. Dr. Fossey, he's this. And then the woman with the scarf and how that, what, you it's know. So, it's so many. It's a bunch of, it's a bunch of stuff that is important. But really, if they condensed it, they could do all of that in a few hours and then give us the, the real information about what's going on in our communities with our people, not just about coronavirus, but we want to know how, how are people, there's a state, a, a saying that says, don't ever miss an opportunity. To, uh, no, 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 don't ever miss opportunity to, no, 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 okay. Don't ever miss the opportunity to take advantage of a crisis. That's it right there. There you go. Don't ever miss the opportunity to take advantage of a crisis. So, you know, some of our people feel- That could, that could be both negative and positive. It, right, but some of our people feel like, oh, they created the coronavirus, this and that. Okay, well, maybe they did, maybe they did. But what we know is that people will take advantage of it. So right. what type of voter suppression efforts are in place right now to stop us from being able to get to the polls come election time, right? What is happening with um, all of the remaining um, uh, um, Democratic contests, right? What is happening with all of that? 
which we know now Bernie Sanders is no longer running, but I'm just saying prior to him dropping out of the race, people totally couldn't focus anymore on primaries. It just wasn't even a thing, right? So we 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 have to we have to have black media. We've got to have the Roland Martins and the DL Hughleys and the Shahs and others to keep us informed about what's going on. Because if we turn on CNN, we're 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 only hearing about who died. And I'm I'm super grateful for this episode because this is now our our demographic is the 16 to the, the 30 year olds to, right. to the 40 to the 50 year olds. However, on a day to day basis, it's, it's the younger generation. This episode right here is the awareness that our generation needs and that they are going to get from this episode right here for the simple fact that, yes, we are a, a music uh, driven. driven industry and things mm -hmm. of that sort, but there's way more bigger issues than music. And wow. it was very important for us to highlight that on, on today's episode. Listen, if people don't shelter in place and stay their asses in the house, yeah. there ain't gonna be no music. The yeah. music is gonna be singing lullabies <laughs> as your family members stand with only 10 people on the curbside watching your body be lowered into the ground. That's how serious it is out here. You're not even able to hold a real funeral for your loved ones. And yeah. then, and, it, and when you talk about young people, my mind is boggled as to how we can still have gun violence and other types of violence happening in our communities what, right what now. What part of New York are you in right now? I'm in, I live in the Bronx. Oh, oh, so yeah, you, yes, your citizens at work. Yeah, oh right, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, what? There was a fight, a robbery, I've seen, a stabbing, I've been a whole huh? bunch of stuff on my city. I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, so I've been okay. seeing a food a whole bunch of stuff on my citizens app, and I'm just like, well, damn, I see Why was you outside? I was saying the same I'm thing like, about the whole incident that happened supposedly, allegedly, with Yaya Mayweather and the girl and the whole thing. I'm like, yo, you wasn't even supposed to be there. If whatever happened, what I don't know who's right, lying, telling the truth, whatever happened, but you was not, how was y'all outside? <laughs> That's the question. Well, well to me, good. It, it, it was definitely a pleasure. Uh, I want you to, uh, before you go, I need you to let everybody know where they can follow you at because I need to follow you. Oh, like man. Thank you. So I have two places. Instagram is the easiest. It's the only thing that I really pay attention to. I mean, I go on Facebook, but they say I'm negative Betty on Facebook, so don't go on there because I'm just <laughs> all day long saying, Cuomo, he's trash. Um, this is, that's a lie. Someone, Trump ain't, you know, so people don't go to my Facebook. But on Instagram, I'm at Tamika D. Mallory, at Tamika D. Mallory. And also, um, folks can go to Until Freedom, at Until Freedom, U-N-T-I-L Freedom. You can follow me there. You know, um, I'm a partner with my son, Lennon, the, my son, the general, Linda Sarsour, who's my Palestinian Muslim sister from Brooklyn, and attorney That's Angelo so Pinto. in New York right now. Yeah, we, we are co-founders of an organization called Until Freedom, and that's where you can check out our work and see everything that we're doing. That's awesome. Thank you, Shah. Thank you for having me. No problem. Do not worry. We are in tune for many years to come, and we will. Don't worry. You might you might just hear them shout out to an activist. I might. Hey, you already an activist. Let's keep talking. In my own right. In my own right. You absolutely right. In my Let's own keep right. talking, brother. But I'm super excited for this episode. I'm super excited for this our, 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 us connecting. And God bless. Be safe. You too. Be safe. And I'll Stay inside. You. I'll speak to you soon. Don't Peace. Worry. <laughs> we just launched a new, I'm talking brand new, Who's Next contest for artists and curators. It's going from April all the way through May. We're giving you more chances to win big. Every week, one artist from our Who's Next Top 20 leaderboard will be selected to win their 15 minutes of fame, y'all. Each winner will get their track promoted across Hot 97 digital platforms, plus get five minutes on our IG Live to tell our 1.3 million followers why they should get in tune with you and your music. And we ain't stopping there. And at the end of the contest, our eight winning artists will be on the track list of a Hot 97 and Slang album that will be marketed all around the world. So you might really want to get in on this. Do not play with this opportunity. Submit your track now at who'snext.hot97.com 
and create your free slang account over at slangdistribution.com. All right, and for what songs are hot, we are looking for you to join the crew and become a Who's Next curator. Every week in April through May, we will be giving away $250 to the top curator on the leaderboard. Get your points up by giving feedback to artists on their tracks. Yeah. So all you got to do is listen to the music, give your honest opinion, and you can get $250 cash money. Go to who'snext.hot97.com now to create your account and start rating tracks, all right? Now, guys, it's been over a year since we launched Leaderboard Live, so I want to just make sure I give you guys a special shout out, all the viewers out there, a special thank you to you guys. Now, we are gonna be adding a little bit of flavor. I wish I could tell you right now, but we are gonna be adding a little quarantine flavor to the show. So for all updates, make sure you guys follow us on Instagram at Hot97, who's next? to stay updated on the latest, all right? Until next time, it's your boy, the voice of the young people's shop book. I'll see y'all next time. Ah!